GitHub is a social platform that allows developers like us to contribute code, to push code, to have repositories of code into a centralized place so we can do version controls, changes, create issues, fix bugs in a one way of a kind of collaborative approach. In this video, we will learn about the GitHub API. As developers, how can we interact with this API and uh, do a lot of cool stuff with this API, this is coming up. What's up, y'all? This is Hussein Nasser from IGM3, where we discuss software engineering by example. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, we discuss all kinds of sort uh, of software engineering topics in this channel, tutorials, and much more. So if, uh, if you're new here, consider subscribing. I'm gonna try something else this video. I'm gonna actually be prepared for once in my life, okay? And uh, uh, I decided to do sections. So this is what we're gonna discuss in this video, right? So it's gonna be, a uh, little bit lengthy video so i'm gonna put jump codes in each section of these so you can freely jump into the video to the section you're interested in with that said let's just jump into the video section one the first thing we're gonna talk about is how can we search repository using the github api so this is just the public way without any authentication without anything publicly available repositories how can i search them okay and obviously guys we're gonna use javascript because it's one of the greatest language and you can just quickly you don't have to install anything it's just literally on your browser so you can immediately use it okay but obviously you can use any language to hit that api okay so search repository that first section so second section two is uh, going to do another search but different right so it's going to do searching issues issues are uh, basically uh, topics and questions or bug reports feature reports that you can create on rep repositories and you can uh, people can collaborate create comments right on this issue and then you can merge code based on this issue okay uh, commits so search number three we're going to talk about commits okay so people as you commit code to to the repository like you push code you basically create a commit and this is very critical and this is very good to essentially uh, test right so cert the commit api as of today it's not actually it's still in the preview mode so you will need some sort of a special header to activate it we're going to take about talk about it pagination obviously when you call this api you don't you don't get every single all the results you'd get pages of results and we're going to play with that so this will be a little bit a lengthy section to play with that pagination okay authorization uh, obviously not everything is public in github okay and sometimes you're kind of rate limited if you're public if you don't sign in but this is where we will learn two methods of authorization at least or authentication uh, basic which is the plain text of things username password and tokens okay we're going to talk about both and then we're going to use your authentication in order to, to access private repos or repos that you only have access to okay not things that are public right uh, and then finally we're gonna try all of this up to section five is all in reading right section six is where we'll learn about creating stuff changing station so we're gonna post stuff we're gonna create an issue in section six with that said let's just jump into the code guys all right section number one search repository so how we do this before we even jump to this we will need to set up our environment what do you need guys to start you need minimum an editor text editor i prefer visual studio code okay if you have that you're good to go if you have sublime text on any other editor, you're also good to go. uh, but i prefer visual studio code because it's it's one of the best editors. I use it for almost all, all scripting languages all there. Okay, and that that's and and you're gonna need uh some sort of a web server to host your because we're gonna write it's a static HTML file to uh, render on the browser. So you're gonna need uh some sort of web server. I prefer Node.js to spin up HTTP dash server. I'm gonna reference the videos here that uh, you can use to basically spin up a sample web server so you can serve your static files. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Visual Studio Code, right? And this is like blank Visual Studio Code. And I am going to open a brand new folder. Okay, and I have here a folder called JavaScript Playground. Where This is where I put all my JavaScript code. 
you just you what you do is basically create a folder brand new folder and this is where you will basically create this is your project this is our project i'm gonna call it github tutorial okay create and then i have a brand new github tutorial folder and we're ready so by default, when you install Visual Studio Code, it, it kind of recognized JavaScript, and uh, I didn't have to install any extension or whatever, right, guys? So this is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is create a brand new file, and this is an HTML file, so I'm going to call it index.html. Okay. And then let's add some boilerplate HTML code. So you can do you, the usual stuff, HTML, blah, blah, blah. But you can also do HTML-5 and... Visual Studio Code will nicely add all this uh, boilerplate code for you, okay? So let's just test our application as usual, guys. H1, let's just add an H1, GitHub tutorial, whatever. And then uh, let's just spin up this and test it. In order to do that, we're going to do terminal. You go to terminal, new terminal. Literally type in that folder, http-server dot. And I can do this because I have installed and uh, set up Node.js to, to spin up the static files, all right? And if you do that, okay, again, I'm going to reference the video that I did that, guys, on it. So just like that, I have a web server running, and I can serve my files. So if I go to localhost 8080, so if I go to the browser and type localhost 8080, you notice that GitHub tutorial is spin up. And... We are ready now, literally ready to start writing code. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do here, guys. I am going to add uh, a button, and I'm going to get this button because this first thing is like get repos, right? So I'm going to call it repos. And then the name of the button is literally called repos. And this, is, this will search all the repository that have maybe, I'm going to write the code to search all the repository that have maybe more than 100,000 stars, okay? And uh, I know free, free code camp is one of them, all right? So let's let's test that uh, theory. Okay, so div, I'm going to div, I'm going to add a div element where I'm going to render my result here, div result. And I think we're ready to write some code, guys. That's that's the only thing I want. A button and this, all right? So I'm going to add a script tag here where I will start adding my code, essentially, right? So I am going to have a function called git repos, all right? And this function will be called when someone clicks on my button, which is button repos. And this is like all the setup code that, guys, that we have to do before we actually jump into the video, right? I don't want to like copy and paste code for you guys. I like to start from scratch. I'm not gonna change this in my in my channel. I like to I I don't like to copy the paste code that exists. I like to write everything from scratch, and um, I think it's it's always better this way. So I'm gonna get the element which is the button repos, and then literally just do add event listener. When someone clicks this, go ahead and call repos. Okay. And then let's just test this thing. Alert, test. And that's the beauty thing. You want to be in this loop where you save, you go back, refresh, and you see your changes. Click on this beautiful button, and then you're gonna get the alert, okay? So now we have kind of a boilerplate code ready for us to code. And that's the beauty, beauty of the JavaScript code here, guys, and the browsers in general. We have a method in every browser enabled by the JavaScript, it's called fetch. And with this thing, you can literally call the any API out there. And I made a video about the fetch API, I'm gonna reference it here if you wanna learn more about it, but I'm gonna assume that you do. It's essentially just, you you call fetch and then you pass the URL with headers and information and go, comes back with the result and you render this result, okay? And uh, the fetch API is a promise-based API, okay? And because of this, you can either do fetch dot then dot then. That's one way of doing it. But I prefer the uh, to to do an async approach with this. Once you have an, a promise-based uh, API like this, you can use an async function, which is like easier to debug. So to do an async function, you literally add async before a function name, okay? And every function call that is a promise base, you you literally uh, add a wait before it, okay? 
So let's do that. I'm gonna add a const response here and I will make a basic request to the a URL. Let's, let's declare a URL here. HTTPS API dot github dot com. So let's let's make a request to the API dot github dot com. That's the API. That's the github API. It's very easy to remember, guys, right? API dot github dot com, literally. And then I'm gonna pass the URL here. Okay. I'm not gonna pass more information here. Maybe later we'll learn more about it. Okay. But essentially, I can close this now so we can see better. We can zoom in a little bit. Now we have a response, and what I'm gonna do is I am going to get the result. The response is actually the entire result, but the body of the response is not rendered unless you ask it to. And that based on the format type, you can really know what's the what's the response type. And you can always assume that GitHub always returns JSON. It's in the documentation. So you what you're gonna do is just response.json. But since this is another uh, asynchronous function, you will follow it by await. Okay. So now let's just do a console.log result here and let's start debugging, guys. Let's see what we, what we get. So if I do refresh here, and then this is the beauty of a really browser. If you go to here, go to more tools, right? And then you go to developer tools, you will open this beautiful console. Right, and then if you click on sources, you can actually debug this code, which is pretty neat, guys. So let's start debugging this. Okay, now if I click this button, now we go to this function, right? Step in, we get the URL. Step in, we just made the request, give back a response, and the response says 200. That means good, you got the result, but you really have to ask for a response, right? Which basically takes the body and converts it into the format you like. And I know this JSON, so I'm gonna go ahead and respond. And this is usually a quick operation. It just happens all in memory. This is the result we get. And that's the beauty of this GitHub API, guys. GitHub API is one of the best APIs I've ever worked with because it's a fully restful, truly restful API. With just that call, you can actually navigate the entire page, the entire uh, API, because it tells you what API to call next. It tells you, hey, if you want code search, if you want code search, hit this URL. If you want uh, commit search, hit this URL, and so on. And that's a beauty. And it tells you the definition, emojis, every single thing. And that's a that's the cool thing about it, right? So here's what we want to do. We want the search API, but we want the repository search. We want to search the repository. So what do we do, guys? Okay. Uh, obviously, it's going to come in. This is not what we're interested in, right? We were interested in repos. So to do repos, guys, we will do follow this by slash search and slash repositories. I hope I spelled it right. Okay. So if you're searching, you you can search the repositories, but you have to provide a filter, okay? And this filter is for as a query string. Again, guys, we, we also explained, made another video about query string versus resource parameter and all that stuff, right? You, query strings are usually start with a question mark like that and then uh, the variable equals something, okay? So that's uh, essentially the, what a query string. I'm gonna reference a video that we did on query strings, okay? And then what you do is basically you literally do q equal and then you're good so now we are jumping to the specific parameters for github and we're interested in the stars right so you you what you'll do is the parameter that's called stars right i want all the stars that are greater than hundred thousand stars okay Give me all repos that are greater than 100,000 stars, okay? And this is the trick. This is the separator of the parameter, okay? And this is the value of this parameter. In this case, greater than 100,000, okay? If you want less than, then you do this. If you want equal, which I don't know why you would do that, right? Yeah, it's like exactly 100,000. You're not going to get anything, okay? So... So this is the 100,000, okay? We're gonna do between in, in a minute now. So stars, give me everything that's 100,000 
and above okay and let's do this if i go refresh let's take a look at the result and then have to click obviously we did not click right click there you go get the result get the response get the results and if you get here we got how many did we get we got eight items that's the array baby we will play with this array now we got eight items right and then it's an array so this is the object the result object is an array uh, it's, it's an object dot items is the array and for each element we get all this beautiful stuff and the first one is as i expected free court cam sits at uh, how many stars did it have should show the number of stars here somewhere right stargazers count not nah, two nine nine seven two three whoa whoa what <laughs> right that's pretty cool guys right okay so i want to display this on my on my page i want to show all the repos on my page in order to do that i'm gonna play some html javascript stuff guys full underscore name let's remember that okay so let's just play with this I am going to just do result dot items dot for each i console dot log i dot full underscore name. Was that that's that right? right? That, I think that's right. Now if I do refresh and let's remove the debug, click here, and then obviously these are all my repos. Should be eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight greater than two hundred. Okay. And these are all the top, uh, obviously, uh, repos. Okay, so what do we know? What do we need to do, guys? Let's do. Let's actually show them instead of just printing them on the console. Let's actually add them. How about that, guys? So I'm gonna add them to the HTML page, and uh, let's create const dev result dig good element by id dev result right so we're gonna get the dev element here and then what we will do is literally append child and uh, for simplicity let's just add document dot create text node i dot was it full name yeah and now we refresh repos and all of them are just Appended on each other kind of ugly so you can you can start doing this guys, right? You can do this then document dot Create element and then create a br element Right, that's one way to do it And then you do it this way, but I'm gonna do it as links guys I want to when I click here. I want to do like uh, want you to take me to that to that thingy How do I do that? Okay, so instead of doing text node, what we're gonna do is a create element. But this element is fancy. Okay, I'm gonna create an anchor element. Anchor equal document or get element by no, wait wait guys. The create element, anchor elements is a. You guys know anchor right? He's a good guy. Anchor dot href. What's the URL? We still don't know. We'll figure it out anchor dot dot text did i i don't think i spelled it right okay the text content is equal to i dot full name right and what we're gonna do is literally append child append this anchor and uh, we don't need a uh maybe we actually need a br let's add a br here okay let's do it let's see what happens here if i do that repose we get URLs, but the URLs are bad, <laughs> right? They're just pointing to the same page. So what is the URL, guys? I don't know if you paid attention. I think it was called, and that's always, I always do this, guys, right? So if I don't know, I will just do that and then debug, go items, zero, and then let's, I think it's called HTML underscore URL. So that's the actual ish html reference right that we can use okay and be careful guys while making these requests you're gonna get banned after if you're making too much requests using public api like that we're not authenticated on anything we just 
we're nobody and making a quiz and and github is kind enough to actually serve us which is pretty cool right but remember if you do i think too many requests you're gonna get rate limited and gonna get blocked so be careful what we're doing here okay i think when you're logged in which we're gonna talk in section six we're gonna get better at that so we're gonna do i dot html underscore url then refresh click and then just like that look at that 299 stars what's the next one view views how much is a view is 133 oh my god that's a big difference how about guys i do all the star all the repos that are that have hundred between hundred thousand and two hundred okay so to do that guys you go back to this repository stars and instead of doing greater than you do hundred thousand and then you do dot dot two hundred right let's just let's do three hundred so we get code uh, code camp right between hundred and three hundred thousand so we know we're gonna get a view and we're gonna get code camp just two results let's say let's say let's see refresh what we're getting more than that okay so now let's see if actually we we, we did we refresh that code yes we did if i do this let's see do all of them have more than ten thousand? maybe tensorflow oh Oh yeah, Google gets tensor for let's see. <laughs> All of them have more than hundred thousand guys. <laughs> let's okay, let's let, let's change that. Let's see. 150. Okay. Let's raise the bar a little bit. There you go. <laughs> so just free cap. Okay. There's a bug, guys. If you click, we keep appending this. We need to clean it up. How do we do that? How do we do that, guys? I'm gonna add a function here that is literally called function and it's called clear and then what it does is it literally takes div result dot clears everything and to do that uh, i like to do you you can do inner html equal mt but it's for some reason slower so what you do is like while you you manipulate it with javascript while first child while it, while it has a child remove that child right that's what you do okay while it has a child, remove that child, the first child, and that's it. All of this will clear it up, okay? And we wanna call it before we basically call it git repos. And now if I refresh, what did we do? <laughs> Nothing is happening. I think we broke something, guys. We broke something while is not defined of course what the heck is well hell is not defined well is not de <laughs> i was such an idiot <laughs> there you go 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 all right guys this is the end of section one well, let's jump and see you in section two guys all right guys so Section two, in section two, we will learn how to search issues, right? And and issues are essentially where, where the users create in, in the repos in order to basically interact with the repo and uh, like, uh, uh, for example, create bugs or features for other developers to start implementing, right? Questions, anything, right? And then we're going to pl play with this uh, uh, API and then get the issues. And let's just jump into the video, guys. All right, so... Free code camp. This is the issues list of free code camp. Okay, there's obviously a lot of issues, right? So if I if I just do hey, give me all issues. Okay, you can you'll get a lot of results, right? But let's say I want to get all issues for a user. Raise da dead. All right, you are a pro, sir. Let's get all your issues here. So 13 open issues, and, and there are actually more, 108, 18 closed, okay? There's plenty of issues here for us. This is our our uh, candidate. Let's jump to coding, guys. Okay, so obviously, guys, I'm gonna create another uh, function. Let's copy this template, right? 
and then call it git issues. Okay, and uh, it's kind of similar everything except this, right? And instead of git hub api.github.com search repositories you literally do get search issues and then we're not searching stars here guys we're searching we're searching by author okay in order to search by author you do the same thing right q equal and then you type author and since it's a parameter you have to separate it with a colon and then you type the author name okay and uh, who is the author of these issues who was the author so the author is raise the dead let's copy and paste this guy and then this is the first parameter obviously we're searching the entire github platform for anything that this user had but i want to also specify to only code camp free code camp so you can add a space that's the second parameter and the second parameter is called repo Okay, since it's a parameter, you follow it up with a colon. That's how GitHub works. And then what's the uh, what's the repo name? Free code camp, the username, which is the free code camp, and then slash the repo is called free code camp. Okay, and then if you want to make sure this is basically the repo name, free code camp, free code camp. I think it's, it doesn't have to be case sensitive, but just like that, we now have all the issues for this user let's see if this worked okay and uh, obviously guys we are expecting html url and full name that's not correct right the result is kind of different okay so let's step in and debug my code okay first of all <laughs> we forgot to create a button guys we need a new button guys a brand new button and this button is called button issues Okay, button issues, and if someone clicked on the button issue, we will add, we're gonna call button issues, call get issues, right? Sweet, right? Now we wired up all the events, let's test this thing. We have issues now, if I click on issues, Let's debug issues. Where are you, man? There is issues. Issues. There you go. We got some result, guys. We got 30. By the way, guys, we have 389 results. I, I did not explain this before, or maybe we didn't have enough results. But total count is actually 389. But GitHub API only gives a 30. And this is called pagination. So it doesn't overflow the the bandwidth doesn't overflow you as a client doesn't overflow the server <laughs> and the database so what it does is actually gives you pages of result and then we're going to talk about pages in section five i think okay so this is the result dot item so we're still the same thing that's consistency i like that dot zero the first result is there's body the body of the issue there is a title of the issue somewhere here right feature recapture that's the feature, uh, yeah, we're gonna get the body, the title, I'm gonna just display the title, and same thing, HTML URL is the link to that issue. So let's do that. So instead of full name, we don't have full name anymore, okay? We have instead, where's the get issues, get repos, get issues, yeah. We have dot title. And then we're still building a link, and if the link, HTML URL is the link for the issue. So that should just magically work, guys. Let's do that. There you go. There you go. Takes me back to the pull request. Right? Because this is this is also it, not only the issues, this is the search both the pull request and the issues. Okay. So that's that's a problem. I I only interested in the issues guys right this is for them this is an issue but the first one was actually a pull request okay so how do i filter all right guys so to so this is a good segue to actually introduce you to if you even ever need a more parameter you go to the github api and you can learn more so apparently there is a parameter called type and if you say type issue you will only get if issues if you don't specify you get both Okay, so what do you do is basically let's say type is issues, and that's what I'm interested in. 
okay let's do that okay so let's add this parameter so we are only get back issues okay how do you add another parameter just a space type issue especially it's very easy right guys so let's go ahead and refresh that thing issues and I'm betting that everything now is an issue guy that is pretty neat that's pretty neat all right so we got back all the issues guys and so that's essentially how do we search right the issues API we learned a lot of parameters you can go here you can go to github help to github.com slash API and then learn more about the API and then just add more and more as you want to see like you can play with this API now that you know the structure just go and run with it guys that's the idea of this right it's a beautiful all right guys that was this issues API search with that said let's just jump into section three guys commit search all right guys we did search repositories we did search issues now we're gonna search the commit which is basically the code that is being pushed for the users pushing or developers pushing code right so every commit has some sort of message it has a date it has information and merging with master branch or any other branches right and we want to be able to search the commits so again the candidate is free code camp pretty cool repo the best repo ever so let's jump into the video guys all right guys so this is the free code camp commits on master branch look at that that's a brilliant right there's a lot of stuff so that means there's a lot for us to do so let's just do a search on the comments on the free code camp how do we do that guys you, you kind of catch the drift right now guys right and uh to do that we'll go to our code right and then literally let's just copy the git issues here function and we call it git commits commits and then instead of search issues can you guess there you go and i'm not really interested in the author this time maybe right uh let's remove the author for now okay let's just say i'm only interested in commits that happen to repo free code camp that is obviously doesn't have anything type issues no that's not true but let's just start with this only commits that being committed to the repo which is free code camp all right so obviously this parameter might change we still do the same fetch we still do the same json all this stuff is the same right let's add the buttons guys let's not forget how to do that button commits commits same result button commits <laughs> button commits all right we do that and then finally wire up the event and then git commits all right sweet guys sweet all right so let's uh, check it out let's check our code refresh click commits obviously it's gonna fail so let's start debugging guys and play with it right git commits there's some failures here we'll get to it we'll get to it guys we'll get to it everything commits that give me the result give me the result what do we have we have an error guys what is going on if you would it says what if you would like first wait, 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 what is the response the response says 405 415 unsupported media type what the heck is that <laughs> the reason is this particular api is still in kind of preview mode you can't just access it you have to opt in okay in order to do that you have to since you see the documentation says if you would like to help us test the commit search api during its preview period you must specify a custom media type in the accept header that's the first time they're asking about that okay and you get the github is filled with these experimental preview mode things okay which which you can opt in if you want to do that and by literally just by adding this header so how do we add a, add a header we'll come to that guys now so but first of all that's the beauty of this GitHub API. You can literally just, they tell you what to do. If you go to this thing, okay. If I only can copy this thing, yeah. And then, 
paste, it tells you what to do. It says, hey, just give me that header and you'll be good to go. All right? How do I do that? Okay. You need an accept header. If I go to git commit, right? What is it, my git commits? There you go. Git commits. If you notice that fetch takes actually two parameters, but the second parameter, we didn't pass anything. So it's time to actually pass a parameter, guys, here. And the parameter is called header. Called headers. The headers is a JSON object that takes a bunch of headers, okay? And the, the first header that we're going to pass is accept. That's what, that's what they told us, right? Pass an accept header and literally just put this stuff in. Application, vend, GitHub. I have no idea what this stands for, right? But this tells GitHub that you're serious. You're you you you're 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 not to mess with. Okay, so the second parameter of fetch takes a JSON object, and the JSON object part of the JSON object is a parameter called headers. Okay, so if you do headers, let's just be let's just be good symmetry and add codes for the headers, right? This is how you do it. Okay, another parameter is called method. Okay. By default, we did not pass this, but by default is always get, okay? And so let's just explicitly specify it here. You don't have to, but it's just like a practice. So this is just another header that you can add, not header, just an, another parameter to this. And the headers is just list of headers and we just sent one header. So now if I go back, refresh this thing, and then click commit, right? Poof, poof, get commits. Now we're sending the header. Now we're actually getting some result. We're getting a validation. Search text is required when searching commits, right? Did we miss something, guys? It says, hey, by the way, you cannot just give me the repo and accept something in return. I'm sorry. You got to tell me something else. What are you searching for, okay? So we can literally just add one string, which is this search text, let's say, test right followed by a space so search for the any comment that has a message called test in it anything has test in it and then this okay so we have to search something here okay so we're searching test okay so now let's see if this works and commits push push go ahead go ahead give me something give me something there you go items 30 so now all of these guys must have in the commit object there is a test in it the word test is there okay but is that really necessary guys is that really necessary what if i want just i don't want the test i, I just want to search by date i i don't care if you pass me a test or not okay so let's try that i want all the commits that happened between in in the in the month of march how do i do that let's start Let's try to remove this. Hopefully it will work. Okay, space, and then we'll do author date. Again, this is a parameter followed by a colon. In 2019, March 1st, dot, dot, 2019, March 31, from one March, 30, March 1st to March 31st. Give me everything between this, okay? That's the dot dot again, guys. Remember when we did the stars? Dot dot means between, okay? Let's do that. Hopefully, it doesn't complain. Does it complain? It does not complain. So, we don't have to search by text, right? But apparently, the comments API needs another parameter other than repo. Repo is not enough. It does not, will not let you do that, okay? Maybe because it's a lot of results, okay? So now we're getting all the results. This better be in March, guys. This, all of this stuff better be in March, okay? So what do we want to do here? I want to add the message in the text, which is, remember, now this is like one level below. It's, uh, let me zoom in so you can, so you can see. The I, which is the I element, dot commit, dot message. That's what we're interested in here, okay? Let's show that message, the commit dot message let's do that okay dot commit dot message let's see if this works Whoop. look at all that man 
That is a long message. But that's the commit, guys. All the commits are here. We can play with that. We can, you can pretty much do a lot of stuff, guys. A lot, a lot, a lot, right? So let's click again again. So here, if I do this, I can literally get the author, if you notice as well, right? Get the author, and the author has an avatar, and I can get that avatar and put it as an image, right? We can, we can, we can just display that author. How about that? Let's do that, guys. Let's do, let's, let's display the author. Okay, so in order to do that, to display the author, const image author equal document to create element image. Okay, I'm gonna create a new image. Image dot source is equal to literally i dot author dot. What did we call it? I gotta. I need to do it again. I remember. I forgot. What's it called? Result item i dot author dot avatar URL. Okay. Avatar URL it is, guys. And that's a big image, so let's resize it a little bit. That width, I don't know, 32 pix. Image.style, that height, 32 pix. So, and then finally, let's do dev result, that append child, image. Just add that image. Let's see if it works. We're gonna see the images, guys. <laughs> Look at that, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Kawaii. All right. That is beautiful, guys. Look at all these professional people, man. Love it. I love it. Man, keep coding, guys. Keep coding. I love this stuff. All right. So we have the images. We have all that stuff. Always, guys, that's one way of doing images. But we have talked about the how to cache the image fit lazy fetch the image and then use it over and over again and i really prefer this instead of literally uh, smashing the url here okay the browser does your caching but it's better to do your due diligence as well okay all right guys we have done all the stuff this is all the stuff that have been done in march with that said this is the end of section three and we're gonna jump into section four guys stay out awesome. all right guys we did search repository we did search issues we did search comments now the pagination search okay and to do pagination is is we need uh, we need to learn about another property in the headers of the github api which is uh, which is called the link header okay it actually tells you that's the cool thing about the uh, the github, uh, github api it tells you where to go next hey by the way this there are pages here go and do that good go to the pages right it's pretty pretty neat okay so let's uh let's let's play with this a little bit okay so in order to do that i'm gonna jump back to my search comment api that i wrote because it's, it's a good candidate okay but uh first i'm gonna play with it a little bit change it a little bit and then jump to the pagination let's let's just jump, jump in the code guys okay so this is the github api that we changed obviously what i want to do is like make it a little prettier and uh, this is because that some people just add a long message in their comment so we want to trim this to show only the i don't know the first 140 characters or whatever in order to do that we can do i think just message dot substring right zero to 124 or 120 and then just follow this by da 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 okay if you, someone wants the whole message, just clicks on it and see it, okay? We don't really, we're not really interested. As much like it, I think. <laughs> That's just so we get a better uh, better view here, okay? Nice, guys. Okay, now what I want to do here is I want to page this result, okay? And I want you to take a look at, the, at this here, guys. If I make the call here, take a look. Make the call. Let's zoom in so you can see. Make the call. Go jump. The response. We got the response, and there is a headers here. Obviously, it's empty. But what are we gonna do here? There is a link header that is uh, that exists here. Okay. And what I wanna do is literally print that. I think we can do this, right? Console.log response dot headers. Okay. If I do that, I have access to that variable. Look at how beautiful this, this JavaScript is, man. Just like pause and just continue debugging in the console, right? Right in the browser. Console.log 
I want response.headers dot get link. It's called link. Literally, it's called link, right? And this is what we get back, okay? This is one way of seeing it. Another way is through the network, right? If you could click here, network, you click here, you get the general, you get response headers. If you scroll down, you should see the link header here. There you go. That's the link header. The link header is very interesting. It tells you, uh, it tells you where to go next. What's the next page? Which is essentially they add just and page two. I don't really recommend you guys hard code this. Just rely on this, and then it will tell you what's the next page, what's the last page. And if you are at the last page, it will tell you what's the first page and all this beautiful stuff. So what we're gonna do is like literally do sp string manipulation and then blast this and then manipulate the string and create buttons instead, okay? So let's take a look at this, right? What do we have here? We have a string, right? And then separated by a comma, right? This is this whole thing is one object which gives you the URL of the next, right? And the second one gives you the URL of the last, right? And these two are separated by semicolon, okay? So I'm gonna split this thing in the middle by a comma, right? Use so I can convert into a URL. Okay. So all right, with that said, guys, let's just jump and play with this header variable and just try to parse it. How about that? So the result doesn't have the header. It's actually the response, right? So the response what we're gonna have is this, let's do a link variable here, do uh, or constant. Get response dot headers dot get and get the link. Okay. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna do like a ghetto kind of a string of manipulation. Don't don't rely on this to to do pagination. You you probably want to do better work at this, but this is just to, to give you an idea, right? So what we're gonna do is do a, a split on the comma, right? Splitting the comma will give you an array, right? Uh, how about we actually print this so you can, you guys can see it so we can play with it. How about that? Okay. Uh, right, let's do it again. All right, let's print it again. And there you go. So we have this string. This is my string, right? Let's just put it here so you can, you guys can see, right? So we have, it's separated by a comma, right? That's what we want. So this is the first thing. So we're going to get two an array of two elements, this all stuff and this, right? Let's do that, okay? So let's just do const links, link one, or just like called literally just links, right? And then let's see how it goes, right? Just like, let's uh, start to debug and see how it goes. Here, we'll click commits and then give it a link, split it, what did we get? Now we get an array. The first array is a string. The second array is a string. The, the first array has a string and it's separated by a semicolon. All right. And the second array has a string is separated by a semicolon, but it's called last. Okay. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to map this array into the same array, same number of elements, but object instead of nasty strings. Okay. How do I do that? Literally do dot map. So const. I don't know, I was gonna call it URLs. I'm running out of variable names here. Uh, links dot map. I'm gonna map this and for each element in this thing, I am going to return an object. How is this object? What does it have? It has a URL and it has, each object has a URL and has a title, I don't know. The URL, is nothing but a dot split, right? I'm gonna split it on the semicolon, right? And I am interested in the first part of the semicolon, which is this guy, okay? And this one is this, zero is this, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do, okay? So sub zero will give you that, okay? And sub one will give you the rel next, whatever, okay? Obviously, guys, let's try this and see what will happen. Refresh, 
and then keep debugging guys let's see what we get let's see what we get we got url that's an object that's beautiful we got real next i'm happy with this i'm gonna use this as a as a text for the button right but this is this is a nasty right this is nasty there is a less than there is a greater than there is obviously you can use regular expression to get rid of those but i'm gonna do a ghetto method here and the ghetto method is literally go dot replace find this and replace it with this and then do it again replace less for this okay obviously if your actual url has greater or less than this could break your stuff so be careful with that so another way is just remove the first limit and last limit it's up to you guys right this is all programming 101 stuff that we well they they taught us on in universities okay so now this is a sexy url that's a url i can use right so now i have a url i have a title i think we're ready guys i think we're ready so what we're gonna do here is literally after looping through and dumping all my results right what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna loop through my urls because it's an array right and then what are we gonna do we're gonna create buttons for each single url okay and then what we're gonna do is dev const button equal document or create element button i'm gonna create a brand new button what does this button have button dot text content guess what what's the text content it's you the title that's the title guys remember that's the whatever href next href previous okay and button dot add event listener is actually a function that calls back the commits api the commits uh function which is git commits right and then it pass in the url which is u.url which by the way we don't even take that thing guys we don't take a url as a parameter which how about that how about we actually start taking a url as a parameter and make this thing generic okay the default parameter is this okay and now since we're taking a parameter the button that we're calling this in this won't fly right because when we call this function the event is actually passing the uh, the mouse click event we don't want that so what we're going to do is just literally pass an arrow function here and then call in empty string which will force the default url okay but in other cases i want to call the other url which is the fancier url which has like page next and all that stuff let's see if all of this stuff actually worked all right guys uh we created the button we forgot to actually add it to this thingy the result dot append child and then add the button or the button okay guys guys by the way this code will be available for you right and you know, I'll, I'll get a post the repo so don't worry about just following up if you if you're having time a hard time pausing you can't do that obviously but the code will eventually be available so let's see let's see let's see comments um so i'm i hope i can see buttons do you see buttons guys i am seeing two buttons there is a real next and real last give me the last page that's the last page baby <laughs> that's the last page let's see if actually this made the request right if i make the last request i go to the next and let's just give me the first report if i go in first don't pause all right let's click here what's the url request headers general that's see there you go page number one if i do next we actually get more button guys look at that we get more buttons we get first the last next and previous how coolish is this guys how coolish is this give me the next give me the next Give me the next how easy is this guys they take care of this for you right you can just flip through all of them very easily uh oh there was a bug here so <laughs> i think oh i think i think uh, i should i should really be careful because I'm, I'm sending a lot of requests to the api and they should they'll block me 
I think they block you for a minute or two. All right, so be, be careful while sending this request. Yeah, avatar URL. No, okay, so, so, some of them are actually getting, we have to like guard against of these, some of these, right guys? Okay, all right, that was the comments URL, guys, and that was the pagination, almost done, almost done, I know, you're tired, guys. This is a whole new big tutorial, <laughs> almost like a huge tutorial, right? This is going through all of this from scratch, but let's just jump into the next section, guys. See you there. All right, guys. Section five, authorization. So uh, all the searches that we have done up until section four are public searches. That means you have access to this as a user. You don't even need to log in. It's publicly available. So you can make requests within reason, obviously within reason, you're gonna get rate limited. But some of these requests, like if you were hitting your local enterprise Devtopia or your private GitHub, uh, repo you need to get authorized you, you get up really need to know who are you okay authorize or authenticate essentially okay so with that said let's just jump into this section and then learn about this how about that guys all right guys so I have created a new account here called Hussein test user and I have to create two repos sandbox public and sandbox private and private is actually a private repo right and the sandbox public is a public repo so anyone can test it so what i'm going to do here is go back to this uh, uh the code that we have written instead of uh calling issues on the free code camp i'm going to point it to my private repo and see what will happen okay so let's just copy the code here i think uh, so we don't mess up the existing code here so i'm going to call github git issues private Okay, and then I am going to create a, a brand new button, gold issues private, right? And then issues private, okay? And then literally just do copy paste, button issues private, button issues private. And then let's finalize this, the event listener, and we should be good to go. Issues private. We are ready, guys. We are ready to start testing this thing. Okay. So issues private. Are we calling the issues private function? No. Let's call it git issues private. There you go. That's one function. Yeah. All right. So git issues private. Where is it? Where is it? My git issues private function. Did I copy it? I don't see it. All right, let's just copy. Oh, there you go. Get issues private. Okay. So now what I'm going to do here is go there. And instead of, I don't, uh, authors, we don't really need an author here. Remove the author. Just give me repo Hussein test. And then I think it's called sandbox private. Okay. And then literally give me all the issues that is in this repo. Okay. So if I do this, I don't get any results. Although, are there any issues? Let's, let's, let's make sure there are at least some issues there. I think there is, there is one issue here. Yeah, I created this. No one can see this. So I have one issue here called no one can see this. So let's see if we can actually. All right, so if I make a request here to my private repos and I told you, okay, give me all the private issues here. Okay, I'm gonna get the URL gonna get the response but I'm gonna get an error unprocessable entity and you're gonna get all kind of different errors sometimes you're gonna get unauthorized sometimes you're gonna get this unprocessable entity something bad happened and most of the time this is because you're not authenticated okay and uh, it's it's very very straightforward error and it's it's really simple to fix so one way of fixing this is to add another header okay and this header is called the uh, the authorization header so in order to do that we're gonna declare a headers object here and then literally called remember we had accept at one point this thing is called authorization okay and then there are two methods of authorization there is the we're gonna we're gonna talk about them today there is the the basic method okay which was started by basic 
and by basic basically you send the username and password unencrypted right in a plain text format and then that's that's essentially bad but you can do it in this. I'm going to I'm going to show you both methods. I'm going to re reveal my password because my because I don't really care. It's a it's a new account that I have created. I'm going to change the password anyway after that. So, I'm going to I'm going to just just for science, guys. I'm going to show you this for science. So, what's my username? My username is called Hussein test and then this is my password. const password equal and uh, <laughs> this is just a trick for you guys like uh, back in the days when we especially for us bilingual like if, we, if you know another language it's really good to use passwords right it's really good uh, for passwords so basically this is actually a, a word in arabic but if you type it in the keyboard that is english you you, you end up with a garbage right so it's eh, it's like an old way it was like back in the 90s that's what always the password when languages were not even supported in the web okay so that's my password here that's the username don't 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 get your hope as up i'm gonna change the password after a while so that's, that's just an idea all right so here's what you're gonna do basic you're gonna do the authorization you have to add basic and then space after that and then just add the base 64 you have to convert into a string the hexadecimal string using the base 64 and in the browser there is a method called b2a you can literally do that okay and then you do literally username okay which is that variable plus this and then plus password okay this is one way of doing it another way to Use the beautiful uh, <laughs> ticks here instead. So you can do something like that. That's actually much, much better. I prefer this method, right? You can just do ticks here. Do a tick. And then what you're going to do is essentially do that. And then you just get rid of all this stuff. That's much like it. I like this better. So that's how you basically send an, a plain text authorization. We're going to talk about token in a minute, but let's see that. So headers, obviously, you have to pass them through the Fitch API, then another object, right? Method. We're still getting stuff. We don't post anything. We didn't change it, the state of the server. And we pass in the headers. The headers is literally headers. Sweet, guys, authorization. That should do the trick. Let's do it. Let's see if this works. And good. The password. We got 200, baby. 200 means everything is coolish. Coolish stuff. We got one item, and the item says there is an issue. And no one can see it. And the title of this issue is No one can see this. Yeah, right. Right, everyone with this password can see it now. All right, this is one way of doing authorization. What's the second way? The second way, guys, is the proper way, well, at least one proper way. There are, there are more than one way, but this is another way of doing it, which is like more secure. And you go to your settings, right? Developer settings. Okay, let's go. Th let's do this again. Menu. Damn it. Settings. <laughs> and then developer settings. And then you basically click on personal access tokens. That's one way of doing it. There are you can create your application as an app. And maybe this is a better way. But I already have a, a, a token here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one. I'm gonna create a brand new one. Brand spanking you one. So what's the password? No one knows it. <laughs> All right. So here's the cool thing about this. You can do like a test, uh, GitHub, whatever. You can give it a name, okay? The token description. And then you can give this token kind of access. Like, what do you want this token to do? You want access to all repos, like the private, uh, like, like the issues and all that stuff. Do you want them to write, read, admin write? Do you want public key? Do you want user access? Do you want, what do you want to do, right? 
In my case, I'm only interested in this, right? This access token will only do this, right? So you can only do that, right? Just like, let's call this read token, whatever, okay? And then generate token. And then you're gonna get this nice string. You copy that because that's the only time you can copy it. Otherwise, like you, you will never see it again, okay? You will copy this peppy, okay? And then, and instead of using the username and password, okay? What uh, what you're gonna do is essentially use tokens, okay? So uh, how about we do another button, guys? Here, let's copy this thing. I want to do another way, so so we can just copy this thing. Let's just comment this out, right? I want you to have access to the all the code, right? Here's what you do. It's still an authorization, but the difference is it's a token authorization instead of basic. Right, I think you can just do token, it doesn't have to be capital, and then literally space and then do that. Okay, obviously, you guys you want to do this as a config so you can have it all right, and then get the headers. What do you do with the headers? You pass it in, and this should just magically work. Okay, magically work. Let's test that thing. No one can see this. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Look at that. This is now the token access. That's how we do token access, guys. We didn't use the password, remember? This is what we sent. If I do network, I want to show you both now what happens in the network. I forgot to do that. If I click, click here, you click this guy, and then you can see the request authorization token. That's what we sent. That's what we're sending right now. But if I flipped, this thing right right to the basic authentication let's click here now make a request you can see that this is the hex uh, this is the base 64 uh, decimal that we are sending that's the string that we're sending it's a plain text if you can decode this literally it's a reversible thing Okay, if you took this, I think if you do A to B, oh, A to B, you do that, you get back the password. Look <laughs> at that. My password on the internet. How amazing. Right? I don't think anyone does that. <laughs> it's just me and this channel. All right, guys, that was the authorization, which leaves us with one more section. Before we end this tutorial, long tutorial, I know, guys, which is posting. Let's get to it. All right, guys, final section six, create an issue. How do I create? So, so, so far in the five sections, we are only reading stuff. We didn't actually touch anything. We don't, we don't create. And to create an issue, you need to be authenticated, which we learned how to do that, right? We learned in the section five how to authenticate myself using basic or token based method okay and then this will allow us to be able to create the issue right so let's just jump into the final section guys and create an issue in my repo okay. all right guys so what i'm going to do here i'm create another function called uh, create issue instead right and this is like a little different if you think about it and uh, what th what this will do is it will create an issue okay and creating an issue is a little tricky, okay? Because uh, it doesn't really have a it does have return results, but what it does is it's actually uh, not a get method; it's a post method. So how do we do that? Okay, so let's set up uh, let's 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 set up uh, our buttons here, guys. So I'm gonna get a button, button create issue. create issue right and then what I'm gonna do here is const button create issue document a good element by ID button create issue wire up the event guys all the basic and beautiful stuff create issues and we're good we're good to go guys we are good to go create issue how can we create an issue where is this function 
show me it create issue all right to create an issue we're not gonna search we are going to post against this okay and it is very interesting because the 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 way to do it is all right guys so we have our function we need to start writing okay so um in order to do that we our url should be as following okay https api.github.com and then followed by repos okay and then who are the owner of the repo okay that's me hussein test and then what is the repo that you're interested in and i have a repo called sandbox public okay and then uh, let's make sure it's actually this is the repo sandbox public that's what a repo that's the uh, the repo i'm going to create an issue in and then finally we're going to follow it up by issues this is where we're going to write to and when we say write that means we need a special header that actually tells us to write okay so if the fetch api will take a method right called post not get anymore we cannot just read we're writing so we're going to change the method to post and then the headers okay we're gonna pass in the headers which is what we're gonna create right now obviously the headers guys will have the authorization we're gonna use the same token and that token is actually good right with the, the same token guys that we have used here we're gonna start just using it as it is okay and that's pretty cool right let's just use the same token and that token just works for us okay and uh Let's make sure the same token is actually there. Let's make sure read token, which will give us all this, right? Let's just regenerate the token because I'm not sure if this is the same one or not. So let's generate the token, paste it here. And then once we have that, we're gonna send the headers with the authorization. Now we are authorized, obviously, because we need to authorize in order to write and create a token. And then this is the interesting part, guys. You also need to send a body, and the body is nothing but a JSON payload of the parameters to create an issue. So to create an issue, you can create um, uh, a parameter called payload, right? It's a JSON object. And this is the only thing that is required for an issue, and that's the minimum thing, is the title. So I'm going to create an, a title that say, hey, my brand new issue, OK? And then literally, in the payload, I'm gonna send a body, and the body is json.stringify the payload, okay? And that should be enough. And that should will allow us to create it. Guys, if you're always if you if you if you ever get lost or anything, you can go back to this page, uh, create an issue, just literally search create for Google create issue API, and it just tells you the API here. So we're gonna post into this URL, right? I just made it simple for you guys. You can this is the this is the required parameter. Right, so we can do title body. We can write bodies in this. I'm just literally just add another parameter and just play with it. Right, it's very very simple stuff, guys. All right, so let's just jump into our code and see if we have done this right, guys. So if I do that, create an issue. Go, go, go. Come on, response. What did we get? We got 201, which means created, which means it worked, guys. What do we get back as a result? Obviously, we're not going to get items. We're going to get a bunch. We're going to get back the issue itself, right? So it's it's one item. It's not a loop or a list of items, okay? So there's no array, per se, if you think about it. So we're going to need to modify this, uh, obviously. But let's check, let's check if this uh, my issue got created my issue hey my brand new issue i love my brand new issue look at that guys all right so we created the bunch of issues all right that's that's pretty cool and then obviously guys what we're gonna do here is let's really uh do uh const uh i equal result i think that should just work we don't have a loop or anything let's see if this works so you can create this issue as much as you want the same doesn't have to be the same even this is the same title it's okay it won't give you a problem so result nice give you i which is what do we want we're gonna get the html url do we get the html url please get me yeah we get the html url i should just show it my brand issue beautiful guys beautiful 
that's the end of our tutorial guys hope you made it in the end if you did hit the like button it will really help a lot guys and uh, and if you if you like this video share it with your friends and uh, to learn more about the github api you can always go to the github uh, api page by literally just go to google that's the easiest way just um, github api and then just do like search and then you get here and that's that that's the that's basically where you can start and then you can play with that right yeah, and now that you know you can you can actually play with that and then go back to this uh, documentation and just do more and stuff and then share what you your project with us guys in the comment section i love i love to see them and with that said uh hope to see you the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye